This is another fantasy, the activity of imagining things, especially things that are improbable. So the other day I came across an old story I wrote in high school. It is a long story, and if we were to choose to see it through, it would be a full series of episodes. We'll consider this a pilot episode and see if the story is any good and is worth continuing. If so, leave a thumbs up. If not, leave a thumbs down. The short story we are about to read is titled Z-Files, Bloodfeather. Although ambitious for an amateur high school student, it is plagued with grammatical error here and there. You've been warned. It is inspired by the first full story I ever wrote and follows the same sequence of events from the perspective of a boy named Marcus Flynn. We will walk alongside this growing boy as he is hit with tragedy and misfortune while trying to find his place in the world as it crumbles. Will it be any good? Let's draw short stories. Yeah, I think I'm at the end just way too much. But it's fun to fantasize. I'm my enemy the way they wish who I was. But it's fun to fantasize. Z Files, Blood Feather. Interlude. Faye, trying to break the tension, asked, So how did you get here? What's your story, I mean? My head rested in sadness and my eyes locked onto Faye from their corners in an awful glare. In dishonesty, I don't have a story, I mumbled. Chapter 1. In the Beginning. You mean the lake here, Mommy? I asked my mother with my child-filled wonder. Yes, Marcus. Years ago, the world was a beautiful place, very real, yet only a surreal bedtime story. Beneath our very feet, lush, grassy fields with desert bighorn sheep grazing here and there. The twinkle in my eye believed every word, but how could it be true? I was foolish. Every glance into the sky, fascinating birds flickered through the sun's beams such as violet green swallows and hummingbirds sipping the nectar of flowers of various vibrant colors. On the edge of the lush forest was a rushing river, like charging horses. Following the now empty ravine, you would find the gateway to this large lake. This could only be a fantasy. The world could have never been that lush, so it seemed. Please tell me more, I shouted, with a sparkle in my eye. Yes, little one, the lake was much larger years ago. The river now has run dry, and the lake shrunk to the small steaming hot spring in early 2014. Near the creek before then, animals swarmed, drinking from the lake's refreshing substance. The lake water was cold to the touch. The sun above and the water below were just right. Unlike the sun today, in the land years ago, the sun was glorious and satiable. It stood proud in the sky. Listening to the very first story my mother told me of the world of old, my six-year-old mind couldn't have enough. I was intrigued to the fullest extent. Although the hour was late and the high moon signaled my bedtime, I begged her to continue on, and so she did. The moon gracefully drifted across the sky, she told, and in one piece, too, for it was not crumbled then, it was a perfect sphere. The moon then was like a glowing jewel in the heavens. It shined upon us, giving us hope for tomorrow, enticing people to move forward. The stars, oh, the stars. To add to the stars' brilliance, the sky was not scorched with green fog, but was clearer than the waters. In the day, it was painted a royal blue, and at night, it was a mysterious black, with twinkling stars above. Years ago, the stars glistened for all to see. My eyes glistened, listening to the wonderful description of the world of old. With a quick moment of thought, I asked, Will the world ever be like that again? This former world was only a fairy tale to me. 
I only knew of the world as a dark abyss with men transformed into ravenous creatures, seeking an insatiable appetite for greed and lust. My mother looked at me with almost a dim stroke of sadness, and stroked my forehead, moving my childlike, overgrown hair aside, and said, Unfortunately, I don't think so, no, little one, but it is a reminder of how we once lived years ago. It is the hope we have in seeking out a better future for our children, and in time, your children. Marcus, my child, never lose sight of what is truly miraculous to you. Never lose who you are. Your heart is your guide, and your mind is your asset. It was then that a warm tingle traveled up my spine and a soft smile formed on my face, unable to contain it. Though my child mindset could not fully comprehend what my mother was implanting into my inner thoughts, as I grew, these words bonded with me, showing me the path through my unforeseen burdens, burdens that would ultimately break me. My eyes then grew heavy, and my eyelids squeezed the lights away. Before my mother could tuck me into my loved blue blanket, I was asleep. The night was soft. Just a hint of chill with the wind sprinting by my house. Later that night, something had woke me. My dreary eyes slid open to see an undefined shape of a little girl not far from my own bed. She said with the sweetest, seemingly echoing voice, <laughs> Quicker than I could blink my eyes, she was gone by the time my tired eyes could recover. Quicker than I could blink my eyes, she was gone by the time my tired eyes could recover. I could not contain my young curiosity. I pushed my restricting little blue blanket off of me, pulling its tightly tucked edges out from beneath my single mattress, and lifted myself out of my small bed in my small room in my small cabin. The floor beneath me creaked as I laid my foot upon the boards. My mind conjured up almost frightening images in the darkness within the cabin. In accordance with me reaching for my heavy flashlight, the pitter-patter of feet sounded through the house along with an eerie childish laughter that echoed throughout the cabin. My mind and ears opened. With a flashlight in hand, I clicked the button but no light came on. The batteries were dead. Here I decided to go on to look for new batteries, without my light to guide my way. My room was connected to the kitchen by its two side walls without a dividing wall. There was not a floorboard that distinguished the kitchen from the bedroom. I quietly walked forward, hoping not to wake my parents. Although not heavy, every step I took the floor squeaked under my feet. Here, in the kitchen, I laid my flashlight on the counter and slid open the drawer containing random junk, seeking out some batteries. Suddenly, footsteps that were not mine clattered near the front door. I swung my head in fear to find the shadow of an entity scamper across the archway leading out of the kitchen. My childlike mind exploded with terror. Shivering, I shifted through the junk in the drawer, found two batteries, and inserted them into my heavy flashlight. I quickly turned on the flashlight with a click, rapidly revealing where the entity just was. Ironically, my vision worsened in the light due to the adjustment to the narrow window of light it allowed. All that was not in the focus of the light was entirely black and unknown. The batteries inside the flashlight rattled in harmony with my trembling muscles. To add to the horror, I heard a giggling, playful voice speak once again, saying, I sporadically swung the flashlight up, down, left, and right to locate this voice, but she was nowhere to be seen. The small, creaking noise of crackling wood appeared. I focused my light upon the noise, and the sound came from the front door, slowly swaying open enticing me to move closer. My legs walked forth as my mind told me to stop. Something was subliminally inviting me which I could not refuse. 
I came to the front door to feel the cold breeze upon my feet. Outside my front door was the great open air of the mysterious forest. There was a small grass and dirt field in front of my cottage. I gazed out to the black forest ahead. The leaves on the trees were dancing in the breeze as if they were alive. The trees whistled amongst the wind. I could swear I could hear a soft groaning from the bodies within the forest further on. My imagination created a sensation in me, revealing the senses to a supernatural feeling of a slight rumble from the growls of the living trees. As I stood there at the open door, a growing awareness of something around me overwhelmed me. The shadows within my cabin came alive. They appeared to move, seeking out my soul to feast. I was scared and frightened, so I ran off the front porch and into the moonlight. I turned around, shining my light into the mouth of the house. My light could not penetrate its inside. The darkness within looked like an abyss that I dare not re-enter. The small breeze brushed against the house, causing it to crackle and pop as if preparing to fall over. Then from behind me, the soft childlike voice sounded again. The little girl said gently and long, as if using the entire capacity of her ghostly lungs. The voice echoed from the forest as I turned my attention to it. Looking into the forest, I briefly noticed the slight, ghostly image of a little girl my age running into the darkened forest. She disappeared into the darkness where it consumed her image. Shining my flashlight onto my path, I slowly stepped forward. I reached a forest boundary leaning on a tree peeking in with my light shining ahead. I began to question my being there, but as if trying to reassure me, or just mischievously inviting me to take me away, she called again. My mind must not have been right that night because I was enticed upon her voice and continued on. Following the sound of her voice, she called me again and again, as if playing a game of hide-and-seek, searching me out. I obviously walked so deep into the forest that when I had looked back I could no longer see the forest's end. It felt as if the very trees around me had trapped me within their compounds and wanted me. Although trying to stay calm, I sporadically spun my flashlight all around, trying to get all the darkened spots alight at once. As my light flashed over the trees, the aged wrinkles within the old trees looked like faces, staring at me with a grin of evil. The trees were alive once again. They creaked and moaned, growling at me and howling at me. They swayed back and forth, shooting their leaves and twigs at me. I began to run back where I came from. I frantically looked left and right, and the trees were following me. The devilish faces that were bonded to the trees tried to stop me in my fear. Their branches began to reach out at me. I dodged branch after branch to avoid being taken. Before I could get far, out of one of the trees jumped the little girl I had been chasing before, as clear as day. She screamed with the laughter of a young child. I fell on my back as my body stopped, but my feet did not. Aside from the massive thud and the crackling of the branches beneath me, the fall wasn't all that bad. But when I had opened my eyes, she was gone once again. I leaned up and looked towards the west, which is where she was leading me in the beginning. There she was, off in the distance, running into the darkness once again. She was persistent and without rest, nor fear of the dark. After her aura was entirely shrouded, she spoke again with a childlike voice as if right next to me. Her playful giggle was almost alluring to me. Nevertheless, all I wanted was out. I felt at this point my only way out was toward her, considering her determination into redirecting my path.
Well, that's all we have time to read today. Again, leave a thumbs up if this is a story you'd like to hear more of. And a thumbs down if not. Thanks for hanging out with me this week. Check back every Sunday and maybe I'll hit the mark someday. See that subscribe button? Look at it. Touch it. Go ahead. Take it out for a nice dinner or something sexy. It's very lonely. There's more to come. Still, I can't help but feel that it's only a fantasy. Yeah.